The western half of the United States is facing one of the worst droughts in 1,200 years. That means we are facing conditions that have not been seen in the entirety of U.S. history. This drought is creeping eastward. In my area of Upper East Texas, where we typically experience 47 inches of annual rainfall, hit extreme drought D3 as rainfall took a steep downturn from July of 2021 to January of 2022. Despite nearly 16 inches of rainfall from January to May, my county is not yet caught up. This winter drought is drastically impacting first cutting hay yields, with some ranchers reporting it being down by half, meaning the shock waves of a drought over winter have yet to be felt. The upcoming video outlines my personal drought plan, including how I handled a three-week delay in the growth of my spring pasture, my current stocking rate, my current grazing program, forward planning in light of oncoming price hikes for stored forages and feeds, how much of this stored feed I can actually expense into my annual budget, and even sharing with you how and in what order I will destock my ranch should this drought persist. Just before the onset of spring, my friend and rancher Carl Abel told me it was time to create a drought plan. The low precipitation persisting through fall and winter meant that we were in for something. At that point in time, I walked my pasture. I took inventory of the feed I had available on the ground and the feed I had bought in the previous fall in anticipation of feeding it over winter. This consisted of about 20 bales of hay and roughly three to five acres of remaining stockpile forage. In taking this inventory, I realized I had about 30 days worth of feed left for my animals. At the end of 30 days, I would either have to sell animals, buy more feed, or hopefully have enough on pasture to feed them. This particular point in time was March 15th. In a typical year here in Upper East Texas, we are able to begin grazing the first or second week of March. Nothing heavy, just a light graze that will remove us from any supplemental feed. However, this year, germination just did not happen. and Definitely nothing worthy of grazing. So at this point in time, instead of putting the herd back on pasture that was still trying to kickstart a spring growth, I separated my ewes from my cows. At this point in time, there were 14 head of beef cows, three of which were smaller, being yearlings, and 32 adult sheep. I gave the cow herd access to six of the 20 hay bales that I bought to eat over winter, but that we did not eat, and I put the ewes on the last few paddocks of stockpile grass that I had. Now, this makeshift use of resources lasted about two weeks. During this period of time, my cows stayed in a one-quarter to one-half acre lot and this quickly became a mud pit, and I took it to create an experimental opportunity. I took that half acre spot that was receiving an extremely high impact, and I laid down 50 pounds of ryegrass seed. Now I put down the ryegrass seed about one week into the cattle stay in this area, and allowed them to trample it for an additional week. I moved the cattle off of this half acre plot in the first week of April, once the pasture was ready for us to resume our normal spring grazing program. Within 30 days, what was a mud pit became an incredible oasis of highly nutritious, grazable forage. Now 50 pounds on half of an acre is probably two or three times what is recommended. But because of the significance of the impact, I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of seed cover. I'll touch more on this planting in future videos and how it's inspired me for future pasture plantings. Now, as I mentioned, we have had 16 inches of rain over spring. By the second week of April, I was able to resume a normal spring grazing plan. By about this time, all of the cows had calved and all of my sheep had lambed. This meant that the nutritional needs of my flock and herd had absolutely skyrocketed. Resuming my normal spring grazing plan meant that I was giving one acre as a paddock size, moving the animals off of that paddock after one day of grazing. The entire flock and herd together is about 18 animal units. Now, recovery rate on the grass from mid-April to mid-May was allowing me to return to a paddock within 18 days of previous grazing. Now if you're following the math on this you will realize that I have only been grazing 18 acres over spring. I have five acres of pasture that I have set aside basically to grow as standing hay for the summer drought that I anticipate. This five acres of reserve is set aside not to be grazed until July 2nd but if persistently low rainfall facilitates the need to etch into that reserve before July 2nd that will also be the time at which I begin marketing animals and selling them off of my ranch. Now a natural destocking process is actually going to happen over summer just following the standard routine that my ranch goes through. Calving and lambing almost double the nutritional needs of my animals through lactation but calving and lambing are over and peak lactation has been 
been hit by both species, meaning that lactation will only decline and the nutritional needs of these animals will also decline. My lambs will be 100% weaned by July 2nd and my calves will be weaned in September. I will be retaining my ewe lambs this year as replacements, but selling all of my ram lambs as well as the calves that came this spring. In addition to destocking just through livestock sales, I will also be running my coals, which I run every summer. These coals will involve five to seven ewes and one to two cows from my herd. In addition to this, three of the adult steers, which I was growing for grass-fed beef, have already been sent off to processing. And subsequently, when the forage growth hits its annual low, my ranch's stocking rate will also be naturally at an all-time low. In respect to the impending price hikes that are facing stored forages and feeds in my area, here in May I am actually beginning the process of creating a small stockpile of hay to buffer my sheep flock against any extended drought conditions or any need over winter. But not only that, I am anticipating extreme price hikes in the fall for stored forages and feeds. Fertilizer shortages, fuel costs, and the droughts across the country make this fall look really concerning no matter where you're at. Now this naturally pivots into what is destocked first. If I do not have enough precipitation over summer and late fall going into September to generate the stockpile I need to carry my cows over winter, they have to be sold. My current business plan does not involve significant revenues from the cow herd. My sheep are my money makers. Sheep eat one bale per seven per month. Cows eat one bale per cow per month. Now when we translate that into the revenue that each species generates, a sheep that twins will give me a gross revenue of about $800 in the space of a year. A cow that weans one calf will generate about $1,000 over the space of 18 months. While the gross revenues are evidently higher, the time it takes to generate that on the cow side is 50% longer. And the expense of keeping that cow is about seven times that of a sheep. So with respect to budgeting stored forages, my sheep operation has a much broader margin for budgeting in stored forage. Should a destocking be required beyond what summer naturally produces on my ranch, I will be selling the calves as cow-calf pairs and not just wean calves. Currently on my ranch, the animal unit is split up into 12 animal units as cows and 6 animal units as sheep. Sheep being my primary enterprise and my money maker long term, I will do everything in my power to guard that enterprise and the investment that I've made in bringing in the stock that I actually have here on my sheep farm. You guys look, it feels like a Christmas present now. <laughs>